there are times in our lives in our families where we will require divine intervention because the help of man we will get to a point where the help of man can fail the bible is not careful as to the limitation of the help of men and the frailty of the energy of the flesh it says for by the arm of flesh the bible declares no man can prevail are we together why do we need inter divine intervention because satan and his cohorts listen carefully satan and his cohorts are determined to thwart the purposes of god in the life of the saints the bible lets us know that there is a real devil john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy look at it very carefully that means the thief has no business coming around a life until there is something to steal there is something to kill and there is something to destroy then the bible says i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly satan is determined to see that the purposes of god over the life of the saints individually and then corporately as a body that god's divine purposes are thwarted and so he does that listen carefully he does that by introducing negative circumstances to our spiritual work and then our destiny work in general so you begin your work of faith and either through wrong decisions on your own part through ignorance and so on and so forth for many of you who have listened to my teaching on the mystery of deliverance it's helped the body in no small way I teach there that there are three principal channels listen carefully there are three principal channels from scripture through which demons and Satan attack and buffet the saints number one covenants 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 the legal system of the kingdom number two disobedience number three ignorance these are the only three ways from scripture anyone at all whoever faces any attack from satan anyone at all who becomes a victim of the assaults of satan one or more or all these channels were the doorways he used to access your life i repeat one covenants the strongest of them all two ignorance three disobedience hallelujah and so the devil will bring negative situations around our lives they can come through the ministry the negative ministry of men they can come by manipulating systems and structures look at jesus jesus came to the earth to become a portrait a pattern man to help men see and know god's intent number two he came as perfect theology correcting our ideas about god number three he came to fulfill that role of a mediator through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that men may be saved from his birth there was an attack there needed to be a divine intervention are we together now yes an innocent young virgin whose life was interrupted because a savior was about to be born that was not enough because of jesus they killed his age mates two years and below women cried because the devil was looking for a destiny to destroy the moment he announced that he was messiah people systems were orchestrated by the devil to fight him the religious leaders the political leaders the government of the day came into unity to fight him to a point where they were willing to release an robber, someone who was already confirmed to be a nuisance to society let barabbas go but let this one be killed satan's determination to kill jesus was so high god had to incorporate it in the strategy for victory
Satan will leave no stone unturned to see to it that my destiny and your destiny, if allowed, becomes shredded in pieces. Listen, just because you've given your heart to Jesus Christ and you are sincere and well-meaning does not mean the devil will leave you and say, I'm aware there's the mark of the blood on you. No, no. He left Jesus for a season. Came back through Peter. Came back through Judas. On the third day when Jesus was going to arise, they locked up the grave, sealed it, and there were men who were seated. And the Bible says the angel came with power, rolled the stone, and sat on it. Jesus resurrected, he left, and the men came together. They said, look, um, something is wrong. Let's come together. And re they received money and lied that the disciples came and stole his body. That's how determined Satan is to make sure that destinies never go forward it is not strange and it did not start with you satan's antagonism towards us and our families did not start with us it's, it's a vendetta that predates our coming it's been an ancient war anything that brings glory to the name of jesus anything that advances the purposes of god is satan's business invited or not so when they were dedicating you as they lifted you like jesus was lifted it's not only members that came for that child dedication the devil was also hearing let me hear what this priest will say about this oh lord this child called joshua selman i lift him up before you let him be a blessing to the nations and the devil said what did you say i had blessing now i'm interested not because of what else you said that means there is something about kingdom come in his life you become an intentional project listen carefully oh why don't they like me who did i offend all that statement is just a superstitious talk the condition listen the qualification for an attack is that you are born the moment you pass through the womb of a woman you are qualified enough for an attack then when he sees you giving your life to jesus I hope you know it. demons witness these things lord jesus i give you everything and they are watching and you are rolling on the ground rolling in the house of god and saying my heart is yours my life and my destiny they know satan was once in heaven he knows the implication of genuine surrender he knows you are making yourself usable and he says do you know what let's isolate this person and twat and rubbish the purposes of god in his life and can I tell you, provided you are still wearing this mortal body, somewhere in the equation of your life, you will fall short of obedience. Somewhere in the equation of your life, through ignorance, there will be some level of access. Until you learn what you need to know, you will be a victim of the ignorance of it. So Satan will catch into that moment. This is why we need divine intervention. It was a system of advantage that was programmed by God's wisdom. So that if by any means, through ignorance, through wrong decisions, it is on the strength of mysteries like this, Paul can say we know that all things, even something that should make you fail, there is still a provision in the economy of God where you can be delivered. Someone shout amen. amen. Yes, sir. So when you say you are a Christian, you are not saying you are a follower of a religion whose founder is Jesus. No. You are saying you are one who by the privilege of God's grace, one you have been made a partaker of the life of God, justified. Are we together in Christ? Number two, you are saying you are one who through spiritual understanding, you have been surrounded with mysteries like chariots. These are the forces that help you to walk in victory experientially. These forces of the kingdom continue to cancel away every negative prophecy over your life. Let's see what that family will become. They are right, except that when you bring out one mystery, one arsenal from that spiritual toolbox, you can end something that was supposed to be so. One of those mysteries, in addition to the much you have received, is called the mystery of divine intervention. God did not leave us without his presence he did not leave us without his backing listen carefully there are three levels at which we 
encounter the power of God. Number one, I need to say this before I begin to explain a few things. Number one, the first level is a personal encounter where we meet God as a person, an encounter. That is the highest level. You receive power from that level, God directly. Number two, there is a dimension of God's power that is programmed in principles. You don't need to know him. You don't need to believe him to experience that dimension of his power. The moment you are compliant to and with the principle, for instance, you can be an assassin or an armed robber and still sow during the rainy season and your crops will grow. It's the dimension of God's power that sponsors that growth, but it was programmed in principles. You don't need a relationship nor an encounter to enjoy that dimension of his power. This is a dimension that many unbelievers have tapped into business principles they have built systems structures they have built a very civilized society based on those principles even though they may not honor the god that powers that principle are we together so the first is a personal encounter with the god of the bible second is obedience and compliance to principles principles work because at the back of them there is an investment of a dimension of god's power and then the third way we receive power in this kingdom is through covenant alignment with men and women. Covenant alignment with men and women who God has trusted with certain graces. Direct encounter with God, compliance and obedience to principles, then covenant alignment with men and women. I just needed to chip that in so that you'll understand what I'm about to explain. Are we together? The mystery of divine encounters. It is on the strength of these truths you access the power of God and you begin to walk in such level of victory. One level and dimension of victory to the other one level of victory and you see by this your life shows in truth that the victory of christ over sin over death over satan was absolute and true creation is waiting for the richness of the manifestation of god's power and grace in and through your life to validate the reality of every claim that jesus made in and through his finished work that means I can become a poor representation of the victory of Christ through the plethora of defeats that my life command. My life can be so defeated, it does not look attractive to be a Christian. I can misrepresent the purposes of God. So every time I contend for superior dimensions of these mysteries, it is to the end that we become empowered and then we become trophies, if you would use that expression. That men can look at our lives and say, no, it pays to subscribe to this government. Are we together? In business, we teach that the greatest way to market is to tell the truth. There's no fear when you are telling the truth. Is that true? When you package and you lie, you are afraid of the truth being discovered. So if we are marketing a God to our world, we are marketing Jesus Christ and we are telling the world he is the way, he is the truth and he is the life. They will say we may not be able to see him but let's look at you who are seeing him and let's look at what he has done to you. From the assessment of your victory, the quality of your life, it is safe for us to now conclude if this your Jesus is a better alternative to the charm that I've been using. If this your Jesus is a better alternative to this God I'm serving. Nobody lives better for good. Nobody lives best for better. So if we are selling a Jesus to our world and letting them know that he is savior. He is mighty. The ancient of days. We must be able to present him in a way and manner. That dumbfounds principalities and powers. It is on this strength, the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, to the intent 
this is why he's blessed us so richly with all these mysteries to the intents that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church his bride his body the manifold wisdom of god are we together yes distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us as can now give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands will see do you know why we teach this we teach these truths number one because god loves us and he wants us to experience the highest level of victory that our obedience can afford us in this side of god's kingdom and in this side of eternity but number two we do these things because there is a world that is watching and they are depending on the testimony of god's grace upon our lives for the decision that affects their eternal destiny are we together have you seen marketers of products look up please there are a few people here some of you may be you know company owners and you have all kinds of products and services and look the level of training that goes in to teach the marketers because you are about to defend the image and the interest of a company you are marketing a product that probably expires after six months or after two years and look the skill that goes in Make sure you're well suited. Make sure your communication is, is very articulate. Make sure you smile whether you are tired or not. Look at all that skill. We employ the people, give them a salary, motivate them, and send them. And even when they see their classmates, or their loved ones, or their brothers on the street, they are, not even as, they are so proud of what they are selling. And yet the validity is just six months. The validity is just two years. But we are selling something here that has the eternal destiny of man. Listen carefully. It is truly evil to refuse your life from commanding certain levels of results. Because by doing it, you are the, the destiny of millions are depending on your results. So if you truly love God, don't just say, I love God. You must contend for superior levels of results let your light so shine before men i need to put this in perspective because many times when they hear preachers talk like this um there is a spirit of religion that will usually want to fight people when they teach to empower people once it is not a talk about jesus and a direct talk about holiness and righteousness respectfully speaking a lot of people frown at it and they feel you are wasting people's time no we teach the whole counsel of god everything together they will weave themselves and add up to the revelation of the christ and the glorification of the same we have been marketing jesus wrongly that's why the world has been slapping that gospel back at our face we need to reinvent our strategy come up with power come up with results nobody runs away from what works are we together so i need to say this because there are many people who want to receive these truths but the spirit of religion can loom around people's hearts and not let them to be equipped and they go blindly with zeal that does not have knowledge oh i want to serve jesus and they die like chickens because they are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge that keeps them in victory I believe in the whole counsel of God. Look the kind of bride that Jesus is coming for. Come and I will show you the lamb's wife. And he showed me a city equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in depth. No exaggeration. That is the lamb's wife. That is the bride that he's coming for. He's not coming for some lopsided bride. 
There is no bride who does not adorn herself very well on the wedding day. There is no bride who forgets her makeup, forgets her shoe, and just comes to stand, no matter how much you are in a hurry. If you want to present yourself as that bride, get serious about every aspect of your spiritual life. Get serious about every aspect of your destiny. If God tells you, I want to use your resources to glorify Jesus, then ensure that those resources are to the degree that can command kings. Can I tell you this? The arrogant world that we live in will depend on a high level of results for the kings of the land to hear you. Ordinary people can hear you no matter what you are saying. But our target is not just the people. We also need the kings because the kings have influence. Look what happened to Zacchaeus. One encounter with Jesus saved many people who he had defrauded. Are we blessed? These are principles of kingdom advance. We have a series on that. But for now, it's important for you to submit to embrace the whole counsel of God. There are demons, there are arsenals of darkness. Hear me, brothers and sisters. They are going to come and attempt to attack your life. But you need the truth of God's word. The Bible says, write this down. Psalm 11 from verse 9, the B part. Proverbs 11, I meant to say from verse 9. The B part. It says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge. Submitting to spiritual knowledge is indicating your interest to truly be delivered and to walk in victory. So divine intervention is real. It's a spiritual arsenal that must be part of our equipping as believers. It's part of the forces that make us mature and help us thrive and reign in life. And tonight, very quickly, I'm going to give us four keys. Four keys that command divine intervention in the life of an individual, in the life of a family. Use these keys and you will triumph, bringing glory to the name of the Lord, bringing honor to the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Key number one, prayer. Key number one, the first key that makes for divine intervention. You want to see the power of God come to change negative circumstances over your life. You want to see the power of God come to establish positive outcomes in your life to the end that Jesus be revealed and be glorified. The first key is prayer. The priesthood ministry of prayer. Psalms 18. Please give us the first six verses. We'll do a few readings. So please be patient. Psalm 18 from verse 1 to 6. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Next verse. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God and my strength, in whom I will trust my buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. We're reading to verse 6 and then I'll mention a few verses. We'll just jump to them. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Uh-huh. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Verse 5. The sorrows of hell compassed me about and the snares of death prevented me. Verse 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and I cried unto my God and he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears. Very quickly jump to verse 14. 14, 17 and then go to verse 40 for time's sake. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Verse 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me. Go to verse 40. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. Next verse. We are reading to 50. Please quickly. They cried, but there was none to save them. Even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. 42. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Uh-huh. 
it says thou has delivered me from the strivings of the people and thou has made me the head of the hidden a people whom i have not known shall serve me 44 as soon as they hear of me they shall obey me and strangers shall submit themselves unto me we're reading to 50 the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places the lord leave it and blessed be my rock and let the god of my salvation be exalted it is god that avenged me and subdueth the people under me he delivered me from my enemies yea thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me thou hast delivered me from the violent man two more verses therefore i will give thanks unto thee o lord among the heathen and sing praises unto your name verse 50 great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed to david and to his seed forevermore deliverance listen to me in my distress i cried he didn't just come i called him in prayer the ministry of prayer is very very powerful write this down for reference acts chapter 12 please from verse 5 is a popular scripture here to 11 this was peter when he was bound kept in prison here's what the bible says peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto god for him as a result um herod now wanting people to come and kill him the next time and then verse 7 says that behold an angel of the lord in response to prayer came unto him a light shined in the prison he smote peter saying arise and his chains fell from his hands uh-huh and the angel said unto him guard thyself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me we'll read down to 10 let's go to 10 very quickly the bible says when they were past the first and the second word or gate they came to the gate that led to the city which opened unto them of his own accord and they went out and passed on through one street and forth with the angel departed from him last verse the bible now says and when peter was come to himself he said now i know of a shorty that the lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of herod and from all the expectations of the people god does not just deliver you from men he delivers you from expectations are we together but that happens at the instance of prayer in Acts chapter 16, when you read from verse 25 down to 34, the full text, we may not read everything. The Bible talks about Paul and Silas. Are we together? On account of a lady who they delivered, who used divination to bring money for people. And now, one thing led to the other, they were in the prison. Give it to us, please. Acts chapter 16, from verse 25. Here's what the Bible says. At midnight, pay attention. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them 26 suddenly my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by please keep the scripture suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately how many doors financial doors health doors ministry doors business doors doors of your spiritual growth when it is a divine intervention it's not a few doors all doors open all doors open all doors open and everyone's band was loose 27 and the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled now follow the result of divine intervention but peter cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here uh-huh 
and he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling as a result of that divine intervention he fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said sirs what must I do that is it to be saved that man's salvation was at the mercy of the result that intervention would bring every genuine intervention in the Bible eventually led to the salvation of men and drew men close to Jesus let's finish up he said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ the one who now caused that intervention and thou shalt be saved and it will now affect your household and they speak unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house are you seeing now one divine intervention from the prison now the man is saved and his entire household and he took the same and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straight away last verse and when he had brought them into his house he said meat before them the same person who flogged them is now feeding them and rejoiced believing in God with all his house whoever you want to lift Lord you can live through me whoever you want to bless Lord you can bless through me whoever you want to save Lord you can save through me hi dear we are glad you are still here with us on reflector hub tv and we'd like to know which of the messages of apostle joshua selman upon this youtube channel reflector hub tv has been a mighty blessing to you and we believe you've been truly blessed all the months the times you've been listening and staying up to date with us on this platform we'd like to know drop the title of the message the title of the prayers that are so blessed your life and also don't forget to tell us which nation of the earth you are connecting and us from and that will do us good to ensure that we bring you accuracy with that regards and don't forget if you're a new viewer to subscribe click on the notification bell and also share this video to your loved ones family and friends we love you See you in the next video.